Transitions are simple animations with two keyframes, only the start and the end, that the browser automatically calculates the animation for you over a period of time. So the idea would be when I hover over this green box, it slowly fades from green to red or something like that. So let's look at how transitions work. We're going to start on this link. I already have the CSS set up so that when you hover over the link, it goes from orange to red, but it's, a, it's abrupt. It happens immediately. So with the transition, we can fade that a little bit. So here's my link hover stuff right here. You can see just by default, it's orange. And then when you hover on it, it becomes red. All I've done is I've changed the color. So what we want to do is we want to create a transition for the link so that over time it will fade between orange and red with a little bit better user experience. We always put the transition on the default state so that when the user interaction happens, the transition is ready to go. If you put the transition on the hover state, it would hover first and then it would start transitioning and there would be a weird flash. So we want it on the default. And the CSS looks like this. You write the word transition and then you have to specify a few properties. The first thing is what property you want to transition. So in our case, we want the color property to transition because you can see here and here we're changing color. So we're going to write color. And next up, we choose how long we want it to transition. I usually do this in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds would be one second. And finally is the uh, timing function. And that is whether it eases in or eases out. You can come up with your own. There's lots of different ones. So I'm going to go with linear. So the properties are as follows. So first property you want to animate, animate, time, and then, or let's call it length, and timing function. That's how you write a transition. So if we go back into our browser and refresh, you'll notice that it slowly fades to red when I hover over it like that. Now there's another number we can add in here and that's called the transition delay. So if I go like this and put another number, let's say another milliseconds, I could also, since I'm doing one full second, I could just write one S and that would be one second. This is called the delay. So when you hover over it now, it will delay one second before it starts. And you can see there, it delayed one second before it started the transition, both going in and going out. So the last thing is the delay, which is optional. So that's how we do a basic transition. You tell it what property to transition, how long you want the transition to take, the timing function, which can be one of many different timing functions. Look in the link for a list of all of them and a possible delay afterwards like that. So that one's taking a really long time. Now transitions work on just about anything that you want that is a number, uh, except unfortunately gradients. So we can't transition this gradient, but I want to show you that you can transition a few other things about this button. So let's say here we want to make the border radius transition. So I'll add a transition here that looks like this. You'll notice this time I've written the property all instead of just specifying a single one because I want to transition multiple properties at once. So down here then I could change the border radius to something much larger like 18px. So now it will transition the border radius there you go. We could also transition the padding. So let's go 1M and 1.5M, something like that. So there you go. It's transitioning the padding and border radius. And maybe we could also um, transition mm, the font size. There we go. So we're transitioning all those different properties at once. So any property that's a number or 
a color except unfortunately linear gradients you can't transition those the transition will apply Transitions don't necessarily have to be applied to links like I've done here and here. They can be applied to anything, really. Uh, most often we trigger transitions either on links like this or with JavaScript. But here's just a straight up div. If I look in my HTML, you can see here's a div. And I can put a transition on that if I want. So I've got my box right here. Let's add a transition. Let's say I want to change transition the background color. Let's go background color. I want it to be 250 milliseconds. And uh, let's just do linear. Let's do ease out to make it different. All right, so there I am set the transition up on the box. So when we do box hover, let's change the background color to pink. All right, so now when I hover on that, it'll transition the background color but let's say I wanted to transition something else also I could use the I could change background color to all which is what we looked at before and that would transition all of them the same way but maybe I want to transition a different property at a different rate so I can actually add a comma at the end of this transition here and do a different property so let's do border radius and I want that to transition over one second, and I want that to be ease in out, like that. So this could also be written on one line like this. You can see I've, I've got one transition here for the background color, and then one transition for the border radius. It's sometimes a little bit easier to read if you write it on multiple lines like that. So down here we'll add a border radius, 10px. There we go. So when we transition, you'll see that the pink happens quickly, but the border radius happens really slowly. Let's make this a little bit more obvious, 40px. So pink happens right away, whereas the border radius transitions much more slowly. So we've got different ways to add transitions. We can have a basic transition for a single color. We can have transitions that apply the same time and timing function to multiple things, or we can have different transitions for different things or different speeds of transitions, different timing functions for different properties.